buddy. It's me, obviously. And a graviola, sour sop. That thing's a monster, it's like a dinosaur egg. There's my hand for scale. So, this thing was grown up uh, north in Brazil quite a ways, and Hugo and Katya, who we met at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, Hugo in particular brought it down here. Katya, I'm sure she had something to do with it because they're just the nicest people on the planet. I mean, who, who takes a fruit on their lap in a plane for hours to bring it to somebody? You know, like, who does that? The nicest people on the planet, that's who. Hugo and Katja. I mean, it's just a testament to how nice fruitarians are, you know? Like, oh, some of them. Some of them. Most of them. Most of them. So, most of them. I have some stories I could tell you about some, some people in this community that uh, would probably blow your mind wide open. For others, it probably would be like, yeah, that uh, sounds about right. Anyways, enough about the bad stuff. Let's talk about the good stuff. Let's talk about soursop. We've got this soursop here, and it's uh, about ready to be opened. It's, it was probably ready a few days ago. It's got some brown spots on it. But if you watched my video from yesterday or a few days ago, you will know that we have a lot of food right now, and it's really hot. The weather is pretty awesome. So we're eating, we have like, we're just eating the, the food that is the ripest, and we had this, this soursop in the fridge, and so we kind of forgot about it for a day. And so it's got a little brown spot, but... We're gonna bust it open right now, and I'm pretty sure there's still some really good pieces in here, so here we go. Oh, baby. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of good stuff right here. So I'm just gonna cut off a little piece. So here in Brazil, they call it graviola. Western countries call it soursop. It's so good. It's like sour bubblegum, sour green apple bubblegum. It kind of has the consistency of a, in between a cherimoya and a, a sugar apple or custard apple. They're in the same family, by the way. So a few months ago, I, I said I was going to create a video. I think I said each week about a new fruit in Brazil. That didn't happen. So uh, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing right now. So yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the soursop fruit. It originated in Mexico, South America, Central America, I believe, and... It is just grown all around the world, Asia, Africa, everywhere. It's, it's all around the world these days. Everybody loves this stuff. Graviola in Portuguese. Shashopu in Nigerian. I, Igbo. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I could just for fun, I could name all these names. I'll do a couple. In uh, Ghana, it is called Evo. In Uganda, it's called Ekitakapili. In Swahili, it's Mtokmoko. <laughs> Anyways. There's a neurotoxin in the seed that is called, it's an alkaloid called anonacin. And um, a lot of people think say it, it causes Parkinson's disease, um, but there's no like good enough study that actually proves that. A lot of people actually think it, it uh, cures cancer, but there's also not a good enough study that proves that. I don't know. I say, go by how you feel. Eat what makes you feel really good, but also try everything because you might not know yet what makes you feel good. So I don't know what to say about it. I don't think anybody really cares about facts about a, a, a fruit, you know? It just tastes delicious. Try it if you see it. It should be soft, kind of like a cherimoya. Yeah. I want to thank everybody who was so supportive of my last video. I did lose a lot of subscribers, and that's kind of what I was worried about. I was slightly worried that I was going to like lose a lot of subscribers because I was like, once again, eating cooked food. So all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, no, he's not somebody I should be following. He's not... Oh God, he's not perfect, but no, I did lose some subscribers, but I gained some and overall I gained more than I lost and Overall, I was truthful. I had a really good time being transparent getting things off my chest. Yeah, it was really awesome There's been some really interesting discussions happening as a result and I love it. I love being back on YouTube. I'm excited <laughs> Excited you guys. That's an inside joke for anybody who's watched my last video there's a link right know, here. I'm so go. excited. All that stupid shit. Yeah, so life is good. All that white thing on the screen is because the screen is cracked. I got my phone stolen in New York after the Woodstock Fruit Festival. And uh, luckily, I have awesome fruitarian friends like Jake Ironmonger of Jake Ironmonger's Melon Festival. Jake, Jake Ironmonger Melon Fest 2015! Everybody say melon! Melon! Yes, the Jake Ironmonger. Uh, who gave me this phone because he was there and he was like, oh dude, I got this old cracked phone right here. You can have it. Who does that? You know, who does that? People who eat fruit. 
fruit plus people equals sweet people. No, that's a generalization, and it is not accurate. But the sweetest people, some of the sweetest people I've met in my entire life, just so happen to be fruit eaters, primarily fruit eaters. But I have met some mean monkeys and some mean human sweet fruit, so generalization. Anyways, I don't know really what to talk about. Um, I think some really interesting discussions have come up as a result of my last video. One in particular, for example, Chris Kendall wrote something to the effect, I'm paraphrasing, it's amazing how much more powerful fruits and vegetables can be for you and your health once you want them, rather than once you think that you need them. Once you enjoy them, and that you're loving them, and you're loving it, it's an amazing experience. You feel happy, healthy, vibrant. I got hair in my mouth. But if you think, in order to be healthy, I must eat these. I must not eat too much fat. I must not eat too much of this. I must not eat too much of that. I must not eat a cat or green hangs and ham. I don't know if I have ADD or if I'm just silly as fuck, but I go off on tangents. So now we're talking about Dr. Seuss, I guess. <laughs> um, now I don't remember what we were talking about. We were talking about the power of thought process. And it's interesting because today I was actually also told, called an orthorexic um, by my best friend in the world, uh, or at least he alluded to the fact that I might be an orthorexic because I think I got sick when I was eating cooked food when really I probably just got the flu from somebody on the plane or something, which is a legitimate argument, but not really because he's not in my body and I, he's never tried raw food, he doesn't understand these things, but anyways, I don't want to talk about that kind of stuff, you know, it's just lame and I don't, I don't know if you guys want videos where I'm just rambling but I hope I'm coherent enough where it makes it worthwhile watching um, another thing I wanted to talk about was marijuana um, and why why do we smoke marijuana if we know it's bad for us why do we eat cooked food if we know it's bad for us doesn't that prove that we actually need it or it isn't bad for us no not necessarily why we do those things is because, at least in my experience, this is why, what I think, what I have realized, is that I do these things, even though I know they make me feel bad, because I've associated good things to them. I smoke weed because I associated being with my friends, hanging out on a couch, having a good time. I sm or not even just on a couch, but we used to like go build forts in the wilderness and shit and get high in the forts. And... It was great. It was a fun time. It was nostalgic, awesome. And that's what I think about when I think about smoking weed a lot of the time. When I've forgotten about how bad it makes me feel, or more accurately, when I have lost my contentment and I'm searching for it in external means, that's when I eat cooked food. That's when I smoke weed. When I'm not content, when, I, when I'm searching for happiness outside of myself. And another interesting comment that came up regarding that was some, a lot of people have been like, yeah, that reminds me of my experience, sort of, but like, I still smoke weed and I still eat cooked food, I just do it in moderation, um, and I don't feel so bad. And yeah, I'm sure if I would have smoked weed in more moderation, smoked less weed, ate less cooked food, I wouldn't feel so bad. But, but the reason I was smoking more weed and eating more cooked food was because I was searching for contentment. I was searching for this feeling that you can't get from cooked food or, or weed. So like when I wasn't getting it, I was just like, well, maybe if I have a little bit more, maybe if I turn the temperature up on this vaporizer a little bit more, maybe if I roll another joint, maybe if I cook yams instead of just a regular potato, I will feel better because that's healthier. Sure, you can do too much of anything, but are we looking for a recommended daily allowance of starch? Are we looking for a recommended daily allowance of marijuana, THC? There is none. There's no recommended daily allowance. There's no need for these things. What we do need is vitamins, minerals, water, oxygen, protein, stuff like that. All of which are readily available in this graviola and around the graviola. Around the graviola is, of course, the oxygen. But anyway, I think I've rambled to the point of no return. I don't know where I'm going with this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Maybe I'll name some more graviola names, just for fun. I'm gonna butcher these. All right, in French, cour de bouc. In uh, Congo, it is called kowasot. In, man, I can't even pronounce the languages. In Papiamento, it is called sosaka. In Sinhalese, it is called katuanoda. In Creole, it's called, wow, those are symbols. That is not English, that is not the alphabet. Um, yeah, all right, we're done here. I'm gonna have one more piece of this. Hope you guys can kind of live through me. Sorry, I'm making you jealous.
Mm. Mm. So get yourself some green apple fruit. If you ever come to South America or pretty much anywhere else in the world, it's almost everywhere. <sighs> Do what makes you feel good. Good to see you guys. No, I can't see you guys. You see me. What do I say? It's so awkward. From the very beginning, it's awkward. It's like, hey, you. Um, all right, bye. Camera. Bye, camera. Peace. P.S. Let's do a little, two days later, um, let's do a little lung check. See if my lungs are any better. <laughs> oh, this sounds a lot better. Still sounds really pretty bad, but. <laughs> all right, let's also, I don't know if I already did this, but let's do a little skin check. Two days later, skin looks way better. Um, I'm sure it helps that I put my hair from that ridiculous position to down and cut off that neglect, AKA facial hair that was on my face. But I think my skin has cleared up a lot. I know I feel so much better. Um, I really haven't eaten much. I've eaten a pineapple and coconuts and like one lettuce wrap um, with some guacamole in it. Not because I'm starving myself, but because I've been really not hungry. My body wants Nothing in it, almost all the time. Yeah, I've been fasting, basically. Intermittent fasting, following what my body wants. And I think it's, I think it's turned out all right so far. I know I don't look fucking ripped and stuff, but I don't think I look malnourished. I think I look all right. I think I feel way better than I felt ever eating a standard American diet or anything like that. I think I'm doing all right. So, um, no hypoglycemia yet. Um, yeah. I'm gonna get controversial if I stay here any longer, so...